Tell me, what is the bigger shock? When a product performs at a surprisingly high level or when you discover that it doesn't cost an arm and a leg doing so. Nowadays, when you get performance and features, you sort of have to brace yourself for the inevitable sticker shock. Well, when that shock doesn't come, what is your first reaction? Is it excitement? Or is it skepticism? Well, subscribe and hit that like button because we're going to find out if the Cambridge Audio AXR100 is the real deal. Yeah. Now, before I jump into the review really quick, it has been crazy stormy weather in Texas for almost two straight weeks. So I'm going to do my best to kind of EQ out any thunder and lightning. But if you happen to hear a little bit of rumbling, it's not in your head. It's not your speakers. It is the crazy Texas weather. And I just wanted to throw that out there. I apologize, but I can't control Mother Nature. So on with the review. The AXR100 stereo receiver is the brand's top-of-the-line entry-level component. The AX series has two integrated amplifiers as well as two stereo receivers. Now, I'm also going to be discussing the AXA35 integrated amplifier briefly in this review a bit later, so stay tuned for that. But getting back to the AXR100, it boasts 100 watts per channel into 8 ohms. It has two sets of binding posts, allowing for you to connect two pairs of speakers, either in the same room or a different one. It features a built-in DAC with both coaxial and optical inputs. It also has a built-in moving magnet phono preamp, Bluetooth, as well as a subwoofer out, and of course, AM FM tuners. Now, in terms of design, the AXR100 is a Cambridge Audio product through and through. I have always appreciated the brand's focus on industrial design. They always nail the appearance of their products, and the AXR100 is no exception. The fact that they don't skimp on their more budget-friendly components helps them stand out from the other brands. Everything, and I mean everything, about the AXR100 and even the AXA35, its less expensive sibling, feels premium and far costlier than their asking price. Setting up the AXR100 is pretty straightforward. First-time enthusiasts or those looking for a little less hassle from their equipment will appreciate the R100's ease of use. In order to test the AXR100's phono preamp, I used our Audio-Technica LP140 XP with the Ortofon 2M black cartridge for a bit before ultimately swapping it out for my Cambridge Audio Alva TT, which obviously has its own built-in phono preamp. This allowed me to connect the Alva to one of the amp's line-level inputs the same way I would, say, a CD player. I also connected our Aurelic S50 Pro to the AXR100's internal DAC in order to test it via an optical cable. To test the Bluetooth functionality, I used my iPhone, and pairing was straightforward and once connected, it was 100% rock solid and reliable. Now for speakers, I ran the Monitor Audio Bronze 100s, a secret pair of speakers from Sonus Faber, as well as the KLH Model 5s, before ultimately settling on the Wharfdale Evo 4.1 monitors. I did use a subwoofer for a bit, the SVS Micro 3000, and found that connecting it to the AXR100 was easy as connecting the rest of my associated equipment. Now for more on these components, as well as anything else that you may see in this video, links as always are in the description. Now, as for sound quality, the AXR100 is shocking. It's not every day that you come across a product that performs at such a high level while not really doing anything overtly wrong. Is the AXR100 perfect? No, but it manages to get more than 90% of what I look for in a hi-fi product right. Daring you to ask yourself, what more do you really need? Now, let's start with the bass. No matter what speaker I paired with the AXR100, I always felt as if I was getting the deepest bass from that speaker. Maybe not the most taut or detailed by comparison to, say, the Rotel A11 Tribute or my Musical Fidelity M5SI, but depth, you know, the reach down low, the AXR100 went toe to toe. What's more, the 100's mild weight gain may not have possessed the absolute reflexes I look for in costlier components, but it wasn't as sluggish as the Denon PMA600NE was when listening to the same speakers. Like I said, the AXR100 gets the vast majority of the sonic picture right, at least with respect to bass. As for the all-important mid-range, I really liked the AXR100's performance. The mild bass bump lends a sense of weight to the mids, especially vocals, which made rougher or live recordings just a touch more palpable. The AXR100 isn't outright warm or lush. It still has a relatively neutral demeanor, but when listening to vocals from, say, Alanis Morissette, Fiona Apple, or Dua Lipa, the Cambridge 
Well, they, it reined them in ever so slightly. Now, one of the more obvious ways you can sense this has to do with enunciation and inflection. Because the mids are just a little bit smoother, vocal inflections are more subdued, and as a result, some lyrics may remain discernible, just not as intelligible as they may be through other amplifiers. For example, in Dua Lipa's song Hallucinate, the word hallucinate isn't as pronounced through the AXR100 as it is through other amplifiers. Rest assured this mild smoothening isn't going to outright change your favorite tracks, nor will it make an alto saxophone suddenly sound like a tenor or something like that. It's just a little something that I noticed. Now, in terms of high frequencies, the AXR100 has extended highs with the ability to reach all the way up to 20 kilohertz or the threshold of human hearing. But like the bass, the AXR100 doesn't always have the most absolute control over those highs as you may find with other amplifiers. I half expected the 100's highs to be more rolled off than they ultimately were, and I was basing this on the more subdued high frequency performance of the CXA81 I reviewed a long while back. That amp sounded positively seductive up top, frankly throughout its range, whereas the AXR100 is a bit more lively and articulate, definitely engaging. But when listening at high volumes, it may give up some composure depending on the quality of the recording, but on the whole, it's Solid. Again, it gets the broad strokes pretty much right. Soundstage, now this is where things get interesting, as I actually prefer the AXR100 soundstage to that of the costlier CXA81. First, it's wide. Boundary and perhaps room defyingly wide. Depth isn't as great, but as a result, the whole presentation feels more immediate and present rather than recessed, and I, I liked that. That said, the AXR100 soundstage, while vast, isn't as intricately detailed as you're going to get from costlier components. Instruments and artists are well placed within the soundstage, but they may not be the most clearly defined. Not a deal breaker by any means, but something to be aware of. The AXR100 is a livelier amp with respect to dynamics when compared to, say, the CXA81, at least in my experience. While not quite as explosive as the Rotel A11 Tribute or the Musical Fidelity M3SI or M5SI, it's not that far off. Truthfully, I don't have a downside to the Cambridge Audio AXR100, apart from maybe the remote. Yes, it's functional in that you can control what you need to. It's just sort of littered with buttons, none of which you can see or read, unless your room is really well lit. But that's really it. Because for $500, the built-in DAC sounded great with our Arillac A50 Pro, and the built-in Moving Magnet Phono preamp is also solid. Have I heard better built-in Moving Magnet preamps and DACs? Sure, but I've heard them from components that cost twice as much as the AXR100 itself. So for someone just starting out, I say go with the built-in DAC and Phono preamp and take the money you saved doing so, and spend it on music or better speakers. But if you don't need a built-in DAC, a sub out, or a tuner, or maybe your speakers are just a touch more efficient or your room is on the smaller side, there is the AXA35 integrated amplifier. Everything I've described about the AXR100's sonic performance is present and accounted for in the AXA35, which is incredible considering Cambridge is asking a mere $350 for the 35. Yes, the AXA35 has less power at 35 watts per channel into 8 ohms, and it lacks some functionality, but if you're looking for a capable integrated with a built-in phono preamp, the AXA35 is a no-brainer pick. It drove all of the loudspeakers used to test the AXR100 with the same authority, so despite having fewer watts, power likely isn't going to be an issue for 90% of you shopping for a budget integrated. And from my testing, the phono preamp performance appears to be about the same, so if you can get by with a few less bells and whistles, the AXA35 is just about perfect when it comes to budget integrated amps. And as for other comparable products, well, of course, we have the Rotel A11 Tribute, the Musical Fidelity M3SI, the Yamaha RN303, and the RN602, and even the Sony DH190. In terms of sound quality, I think you have to at least step up to the costlier Rotel A11 Tribute to hear a difference over that of the AXR100. Is the difference worth the added $300 or more? That's ultimately going to be up to you. At the end of the day, I did prefer the sound of the Rotel over that of the Cambridge, but I like the convenience of the Cambridge and that I can connect my TV to it via an optical cable, whereas I would need to use a converter box of some sort with the Rotel, which is just sort of one more thing. The M3SI is another integrated that I love, but again, it's not night and day better than the AXR100. Better, yes, but double the price better? 
Eh, I don't know, that's kind of a tough one. Like the Rotel, the M3 SI is lacking in features compared to the Cambridge, but if you're a hi-fi purist, that lack of features may be appealing. The real threat to the AXR100 may come from Yamaha and their two network-connected receivers, the RN303 and the RN602. Now, I haven't heard these yet, but on paper, they, like the AXR100, appear to be an embarrassment of riches, offering built-in DACs, network connectivity, streaming, etc. for anywhere between $299 for the N303 and $600 for the N602. Based on what I know of Yamaha's sound, I suspect either of these to be a little livelier, more detailed, and less weighty when compared to the Cambridge. Now, as for the Sony DH190, I still think it's a solid performer at whatever its asking price is at the moment. It's for sure still under $200, and it's still a value at that price. Is it perfect? Of course not. Will it drive the most difficult loudspeakers on the planet? Again, no. But if you are shopping mass market products, the 190 will do you just fine. The Cambridge Audio AXR100 and AXA35 are both proverbial home runs in my book. I love them, and they represent two of my favorite components from Cambridge at the moment, apart from my Alva TT turntable, of course. You want to hear something really crazy? I actually like listening to the AXR100 with my Arillic S50 Pro more than the costlier Cambridge Evo. Sorry. <laughs> so if you've been looking for a full-featured stereo integrated amplifier or receiver that doesn't cost an arm and a leg, one that also sounds incredible, the AXR100 and AXA35 are my go-to picks now under 500 bucks. So that's it. That is now my review of the AXR100 from Cambridge Audio. Now it's time to find out what Christy thinks. Well, I think you're spot on about the design. I love it. The quality is really really difficult to beat for the price. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, to be honest, this is this was one of the first times I found myself actually really enjoying the Cambridge Audio sound. For me, I tend to find it a bit too laid back. Okay. Um, so it's I've I have never I've never really loved any of the Cambridge Audio products, at, at least the uh, the amplifier um, the amplifiers. Yeah. You know, I love the turntable. It's amazing. Um, and there's, you know, the Evo, I wanted to like it, but it just, ultimately, I didn't think the sound was What for you me. were looking for. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, now, my only, I, I vary from you a, a bit in terms of your feelings on uh, the, the, the less expensive piece, the AXA35. Okay. For me... I thought the AX the AXR100 was hands down far better, and I noticed the difference in the uh, sound quality pretty significantly um, for me at least. Mm -hmm. I thought there was a more of a jump in uh, sound quality than I think you you thought. Based on what specifically? Like well, especially like in the low to mid bass area. Okay. I think that the um, the 35 ha still ha retains some of that sort of like slow s Cambridge sound. A little bit richer. That I'm bit... used to. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's just not as snappy. Okay, okay. But I thought that if you jump up to the, the uh, more expensive one, the, the uh, R100, that problem is resolved. So... I think, I mean, now I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that it's the best out there because I don't think it is, but at the price. Which one? The 35? The, I'm talking about the R100, like the best. It was, it resolves the issue I have with the 35 in the base, the low to mid base department, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to say that the R100 is, you know, perfect because, no. and as you said, it's, it's, it isn't, but at the price. It gets a lot. It's really good. Yeah. It's really good, but. Yeah. My point was, the point I'm trying to make is that I thought there was a more of a um, separation in the two than I feel like you are saying in, in the review. I think with certain speakers, that's going to be true, but that's going to be true of anything that you go from, say, 30, 40 watts to 100 power is needed to control bass drivers or bass in general. So I don't, I don't discount your, your finding at all. If there was going to be a 
a leap in performance, you're going to hear it most likely down low and with less efficient speakers between the AXA35 and say the AXR100. That said, I think unless you turn it way up, which you like to listen very spiritedly, she likes to listen at loud levels. Um, unless you turn it up, I don't think you're going to notice as big of a difference, but definitely as you crank things, obviously anything with less power is probably going to start to run out of steam a little bit, which is why in the review, I use that qualifier. If your speakers are more efficient or maybe your room is on the smaller side, you could probably get away with the AXA 35. But if you want to listen Christie style, uh, with 95 to 100 dB peaks, because she's not actually in the room, she's floating around the house doing a million other things. Uh, then yes, I would recommend the AXR 100. It's just going to be a better performer. And it, you know, and at $150 more, I would argue that that's, that's a worthwhile investment and, and totally worth the upgrade. I agree. I really do think that it's, it would be better to delay your purchase by however long you need in order to save up the difference in the price between those two products, mm -hmm. because I think it's going to be well worth it. Yeah. I, 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 I think you, you're less likely to have buyer's remorse or you're less likely to ask yourself questions. Did I buy the right thing? If you go with the AXR 100, that said, if $350 is the threshold because you're trying to put a whole system together for say 600 bucks, make no mistake. The AXA 35 is special. Uh, yeah. I think if you're putting it, putting that, the, the 35 to like a pair of clip speakers, you know, you're yeah probably not going to have the issues sure. that, um, that I would have, that I've kind of pointed out. But yeah. Overall, they're both really good mm -hmm. pieces. Um, and you, you made a comment at the end that you enjoyed the Evo, or I'm sorry, rewind, that you enjoyed the XR100 with the Relic over the Evo. And I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. So, hey, guess what? We just saved you a bunch of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you end up with you end up with just about the same amount of power. You have the same feature set. Uh, the only thing that you would be missing at that point is the HDMI. It's the only yeah. thing that combo doesn't really give you. Yeah, it's re I'm I'm really disappointed that Cambridge didn't put the amps that you find in the the XR100 into the Evo. Yeah, because I think had they done that, you would have something that really rivaled the Unity Atom. You would have had something that rivaled a lot of and, different And, you know, products. a lot of things. Yeah. And I don't know. I just, like, huge miss, in my opinion. But, hey, maybe they'll make another one and, <laughs> bam, problem solved. But, uh, anyway, uh, the last thing I want to mention is, yeah, you know, ultimately, as good as these Cambridge pieces are, I do prefer the Rotel mm -hmm. uh, tribute. I just, I like that sound better. So, if you guys have that extra 300 350 or whatever it is to I think it's 300 to spend I think well I guess it really depends on what kind of listener you are I it mean does. if you're like me and you like something a little bit uh livelier then I I would save up and go for the Rotel if not then I you know I think you'd be okay I mean look to be honest had I not heard the Rotel and we had only these two Cambridge pieces in house, I probably don't, th I don't think I would feel like something was missing mm -hmm. because when we first, when we first got the Cambridge, um, the R100 and the 35, I was like, whoa. Yeah. These are good. Yeah. You really liked them. Yeah. I really liked them. Yeah. And that's the problem that, you know, you just knowing when to stop mm -hmm. because you know, what, what, what's the saying? Like ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss or there's always something coming around the bend. Yeah. So if know? I would, if, if we just, yeah. if we weren't in the review business, I would, I would know that I liked the Rotel sound better. And if yeah. you can just stop while you're ahead, boy, wouldn't ever, wouldn't you all, you know, wouldn't we all be a little bit happier and Probably. more content in our <laughs> life. But Hey, you know, we've got stuff. It's a revolving door in here and, mm -hmm. You know, unfortunately, I have to say, ultimately, I prefer the Rotel over these. But, you know, does that mean these aren't good? No. You know. No. And I mean, 
I, I think even Cambridge would argue that the Rotel A11 Tribute is now competing with their AXA like 61 or 81 series. And it's not really fair to go AXR100 at $300 less expensive. Now, we know that hi-fi enthusiast audiophiles, we're going to make those comparisons all day, uh, partially because you just saw them on our channel and partially because everyone wants bang for the buck. Does a $500 thing, $500 thing outperform an $800 thing? Um, in this instance, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. If you like the sound of the Rotel, which I do, I know you do. Um, but that being said, had the Rotel never showed up, the AXR100 would totally satiate my need for musicality and all of that stuff. In fact, we're keeping the AXR100, but we've sent the Rotel back, yeah, uh, partially mean, that's, because that's, Rotel yeah. needs it back. Um, but I could have fought harder for it. I could have paid for it. Um, yeah, but we get, if we get, as long as we get permission to hold on to it, yeah. it can, it's, I think it, what it's going to do is allow us to continue to test other similarly priced mm -hmm. components because it is so good. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of people that would be very happy with the Cambridge uh, AXR100 and it's going to compete very well against more expensive amplifiers. Mm -hmm. And also it's just really, it, it really is a very good universal um, pairing for speakers. Yeah. You know? So totally. I, th I th I, I think, I think it's a good, a very good buy. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. I, the AXR 100 is unquestionably a better value overall than the A11 tribute. Oh, and it looks better. <laughs> it does. It does look I mean, better. I like the, I like the Rotel, but you know, on, upon further re reflection after, and especially reading some of the comments about the little, um, the, 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 the LCD screen. I'm yeah. like, yeah, that is pretty much trash. Uh, <laughs> we didn't go hard enough on it. I don't think I did. <laughs> I didn't. I, I, I regret. I regret not, not, not going harder yeah. on that because it is. It's worse it's, than the Cambridge. It's like it is very reminiscent of a calculator display, and that's kind of unforgivable. Yeah. So yeah, F forget the the badge placement errors. Like, let's just focus on the. Display. Real, real, real bad, real bad LCD. <laughs> but hey, they're probably not watching this one. So yeah, uh, I will say I think the Cambridge products, even the AXA thirty five at three hundred and fifty bucks, uh, construction wise, is every bit as good as the Rotel at eight hundred dollars. And I'm just going to say, from a visual design standpoint, the the design seems more cohesive. And the AXR100, same story, very cohesive. They both have craptastic remotes, so no one's pulling ahead in that department. Um, <laughs> Nobody one, can design a good remote. Not lately, not they, lately. They're all pretty much horrible. Um, I will say this, Cambridge still does one thing that they've always done on the back panel, and that is they label their inputs right side up and upside down for when you're leaning over and making connections you see labeling that to you would be right side up. And that is such a genius move. And they've always done that. And I forget how much I appreciate that until I go to connect something that's not a Cambridge product. And I mm -hmm. go, ah, yeah, you got to learn to read upside down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, really. And I know we've, we've said this before in other videos. Uh, there really is. It's Cambridge is really, really hard to beat when it comes to design mm -hmm. and that the, the bit we added in the, uh, the review, how, how good they, how good Cambridge is about giving really good quality, even in their lower end mm -hmm. products. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that there's anybody else out there with the exception of maybe NAD that it doesn't really matter whether you're buying something that's three, five hundred dollars mm -hmm. or you're going up market to like the edge series and yeah. you're spending thousands of dollars. I think when you get your product from from um, the unboxing experience to the actual, you know, plug and play experience, you can tell that they really care about their design and, and you as a customer, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, 
don't, and maybe this makes people that spend the three thousand, five thousand dollars feel a little bit more butthurt over it. But you know, there, you you feel like I'm important whether yeah. I'm spending three hundred and twenty dollars or the three thousand yeah. dollars, and I think that's really awesome. Yeah. And not a lot of companies do that these days. No, no, you see corner cutting every chance you get, and Cambridge just doesn't seem to be doing it. And that is one of the things that whether some of their products may be hit or miss with me, but why I always go back to them because I, I have a ton of respect. For yeah. Them. Yeah. I have a ton of respect for them. And I also have a just ton of respect for the brand because they're Evos, they're brand new baby. And we arguably were pretty critical of it. And yet they haven't turned their back on us or the customer. You guys, the viewer, they've re up. They're like, Hey, uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? I mean, they get right back on the horse. And that is not only refreshing, but that tells you a lot about what you can experience or expect in your user experience yourself, not just us as reviewers. So I, yeah, I haven't always been the biggest fan, but they make enough great stuff. And even when it's not my cup of tea, I can appreciate so much of what they do that I'm like, damn, damn. I, yeah, mad respect. Yeah, total props. Total props. So, anything else? Nope. They no? made a really, they made two really, really good pieces that I think, for, especially if you're just starting out mm -hmm. putting together a system, this would be something that is going to make a lot of people really happy. Yeah, it's a no brainer. And I mean, when they have it out in your living room, people are going to be like, wow, that's a really, really nice looking piece. And they're probably going to think that you spent a lot more money than you, that you, than you did. Oh, for sure. For sure. Without question. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I completely agree. So that is it. That is now our review of the Cambridge Audio AXR100 and the AXA35 stereo receiver and integrated amplifier. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you is this. If the AXR100 is close to having just about everything you need, what's missing? What else does it need for you at 500 bucks? Let's get a list of things that maybe Cambridge will read and put in, say, the new version. Uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. Our June schedule is going to be a little bit wonky. We're going to try and take a vacation, first one in years. Uh, so there may not be uploads as regularly, but we're working really hard to make sure that you guys don't have to go without. But ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. And also, become a subscriber now. Uh, we're nearing, uh, 200,000 subs. And all I can keep saying is that's an episode you're not going to want to miss when we hit 2000, 200,000 <laughs> subs, not 2000, 200,000 subscribers. Uh, you're not going to want to miss that one. It's, uh, it's, it's a big deal. And it's, it's a big deal, not only for us, but it's actually going to be a bigger deal for you guys, the viewers, but you have to be subscribed. So please subscribe today. Uh, if you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And we both thank you all very much for doing that. You can follow me on Instagram for more behind the scenes stuff at recovering audio file. And that is it again. I apologize if any thunder or lightning or rain noises got into the mix. I'm going to do my best in post, but if I didn't bear with me, I don't control the weather. So with that said, you all know the drill. The only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you again for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.